When you hear the word Sobibor, what comes into your mind? Sobibor represents death. I lost all my family, all my friends. Everybody came to Sobibo, had to die, had to suffer, and it's, uh, this is the end, end of life. I dedicated my life to tell the story about Sobibo and 250,000 victims, women, men, and children, and tell the story about how we fought back, and how we took revenge and he succeeded. For the last 60 years, Philip Bialovich has lived in America. Now he's revisiting the country where he was born, Poland. He's back in his hometown, Izbica. Izbica is a small city, population of 5,000 people, and 99% uh, were Jewish. And uh, very religious. To describe what happened in Izbica is unbelievable. In Izbica's Jewish cemetery, Jews were murdered by the Nazis. By the end of 1942, more than 4,000 people had been executed here. Among them was Philip's mother. It's a mess. It looks like a mess here. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll tell him to I tell him to move. I tell him to move from here, huh? I I I'm going to ask him if this is if this is a restaurant. Is this a restaurant place? Mogę poprosić tutaj Chcę mi zrobić tutaj parę zdjęć. Dobrze? Dziękuję. Philip has no idea where his mother lies. Somewhere under this tangle of bushes in a mass grave. But suddenly, he finds one spot he recognizes. It's the place he was taken to be executed. This is the stone where I was shot. Here, we were brought up with a group of people, and we were, we were executed, shot, machine gun, and, and I fell down and made believe that I am dead. Then they started to shoot. I fell down. And, 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 and people, all the people were, were shot, and I was laying there for a few hours till they left. I pretended I, I'm dead. And, and I made myself room to breathe. And, and many people were, were screaming here. They, they, were, they were not there, they were injured. I couldn't help them. I was all blooded. I, came, I, I went down from the, base, from, the, from the graveyard like from a slaughterhouse. At the age of 17, Filip Bialovich had cheated death, but his family was disappearing around him. His mother had been shot. His father, his sister Rivka, and her son Yossel had also been rounded up and were presumed dead. Then, in April 1943, the Nazis arrested the rest of the family. Filip, his brother Simcha, his sisters Brancha and Toba, and his niece Sara. This time, they weren't taken to the cemetery. They were transported to Sobibor. We knew that 
Shabibo is a bit camp. So when they took us on the road to Sobiba, we knew that, that this is the end of our life. We knew this is the end. Sobibor was one of three secret camps built by the Nazis in eastern Poland. They were part of Operation Reinhardt, the Nazis' plan to exterminate the Jewish people. From the outside, they looked harmless enough, but inside, they were killing factories. Across Europe, Jews were forced onto trains and into trucks. Crammed in with little food or water, they were transported east. Human cargo dispatched to the slaughterhouse. A quarter of a million Jews were brought here to Sobibor and disappeared into the gas chambers. The killing continued like clockwork. Transports arrived, passengers were murdered, their bodies incinerated, their ashes buried. Then new arrivals were processed. Tens of thousands of people went through here to, 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 to the guest chambers. But when Philip Bialowicz arrived here, he and his brother were selected to be slave laborers. It would delay their death sentence. When I came into the camp after they selected us, I saw the, the flames away, maybe not far. The, all, the, all the camp, the smell of the flesh we felt. And one of the, one of the slave laborers asked me, did you come with the family? I said, yeah, the two sisters with the niece. He said, turn around, this is, this is your family. This was right after the, the, when I came into the camp. Yeah, that's what happens to everybody what comes to Sobibo. One of Philip's jobs was to help unload the transports and remove the bodies of dead passengers. And I saw the scenery and the, I, I lay down on the, by the train, by the cars. I wanted to be shot because I knew that I'm not going to live here anyhow. Why should I witness this episode? The German came over and beat me, and he put a cigarette in my mouth because the smell was terrible. He told me to take out the people from the car. When I pulled out a woman, the hand, the, the skin remained in my hands. It was, I still have nightmares about that episode. Polish Jews had heard rumors about Sobibor. But the Nazis tried hard to deceive those arriving here and to disguise the camp's true purpose. There were pretty flower beds by the entrance, even welcome speeches by the SS. The Gestapo welcomed them, apologized for the inconvenience in travel. They told them that they, you have to take a disinfection and you have to undress. But uh, bef bef before you undress, I would strongly recommend that you should send home postcards to your dear ones, that you are here in a nice place, in a nice resettlement place. So the people were clapping, and some of them even were screaming bravo. Then, naked, at gunpoint, people were herded down a path. They were told it led to the showers. In a hut along the way, women had their hair cut off. I was one which was cutting the hair, and they, they asked me not to cut the hair too short. They, were, they still did not believe. They were only uh, a few minutes before that they went into the guest chamber. They still didn't believe that this, that this is a guest chamber. I could not talk to them because I was surrounded by the Germans and we were not allowed to have any conversations with them. The Nazis used Jewish hair to make mattresses, socks and slippers for submarine crews. A few minutes later, in the whole camp, we heard screams. First loud and strong and later subsiding. Still, we didn't hear nothing. 
In the meantime, the next group of people were outside hid, uh, listening to the speech, by the welcome speech, by the, by the well-meant disciple. This was going on to every day. In Sobibo, we went through hell, but also the Germans wanted to keep us a little socially involved, so we shouldn't think about escaping from Sobibo. So they had music, they have artists from Holland, from France, and, uh, and, they, were, and, they, were, uh, and they made us, we should dance, not to think about the uh, about the guest chambers. So you danced? You, you danced at Sobibor? The, the, we know this is, the, the, all days are numbered, we're going to die anyhow, but the, they forced us to do it. What kind of songs, what did you sing about? We were we was singing uh, a song from Holland. I remember a few words, but I don't remember, it's not the mel melody. In toffi shiny young melody, thou the kumma me, thou the kumma me, thou the kumma me, toffi shiny melody, melody, melody. We knew that this is the end of our life. But at the same time, I was only a teenager. I wanted to live, so I struggled. Maybe it would be a miracle. Shiny melody, melody, By the autumn of 1943, rumours were spreading through the death camp that Sobibor was about to be closed and that the 600 Jewish slave labourers there would soon be murdered. A miracle would have to come soon. We wanted one person should get out and tell the world what happened. So we, a group of people, organised a conspiracy. We should escape. Maybe somebody will survive. There had been escape attempts before. 16 workers had fled from guards in the forest while being made to collect firewood to burn corpses. 11 were recaptured and executed. <laughs> Philip Bialovich's own brother Simcha had a different tactic. He tried to poison the SS officers' food. The plot failed. The plan now was for a mass uprising. The leader of the uprising was a rabbi's son from Zhukevka. His name was Leon Fellhandler. He was the architect of the uprising. But we didn't have any military know-how how to execute this plan. So a miracle happened that the transport came to Sobibo, and the transport were many Russian Jewish POWs. Among those Russian Jews was Red Army officer Sasha Pichersky. After just a few days in the camp, he came up with a remarkable escape plan. The Jews would kill the SS officers, one by one, in different parts of the camp and in secret. To avoid suspicion in the guard towers, some of the prisoners would then put on SS uniforms and lead the hundreds of Jewish workers out of the death camp. This was the plan, but could it possibly succeed? The feature film, Escape from Sobibor, shows how the plan exploited the Nazis' greed. Forced to sort the clothes of murdered Jews, the slave labourers put aside the best items and used them to lure the SS men into traps. The Taylor Mundek has found a beautiful jacket for you. I was one of the messengers to lure in the Gestapo to come to try on leather coats or boots. And when they came in to the warehouse, they were killed with knives and axes. <coughs> One of the Gestapo was named Wolf. When he went in, after a few minutes, I wanted, I was anxious to know what happened to him. I went in, 
And I saw him laying on, on the floor, bloated, all, and my brother and the two Russian POWs were carrying him to hide in the, between the clothing. And I think, thought of myself, this is revenge. This is for my family. 12 SS officers were killed, but the plan was discovered and had to be changed. Listen to me! Our day has come! And Sasha, and Leon went on the table, he said, brothers, our destiny had come. Most of the Gestapo are already killed. Let us rise, we have nothing to lose. It's better to get killed by bullets than by gas. We were running all over the barbed wire. And my finger was cut here, bladed, bloodied, and all the explosions was like on the front, you know. I couldn't even see where I was running, so it was a, it was a big, a big uh, mess, mess escape. Everybody was running in the direction of the, of the forest, and they machine guns, machine gunned us, and we escaped in the woods. Could you see the guards? Chasing you in the forest? There were, were, were rockets with flares all, all over the woods, over the forest. And the, even the airplanes, small airplanes, they were looking for us because it was very important. They didn't want nobody should escape to tell the world what happened because it was a top secret camp. <laughs> 